Hey guys, welcome back to Home Chem. I am here with Attila Novoselic, who is the mechanic of this house. This is the University of Texas at Austin's test house, which is the center of the universe for Home Chem, which stands for, again, House Observations of Microbial and Environmental Chemistry. Let's go inside and see what Attila has been measuring. We measure everything about it. We understand the ventilation rates, we understand the temperature, we understand the humidity, and we can control all those different components. So the test house is another instrument, another tool we have here at home My name is Attila Novoselic. I'm building scientist and I'm uh, in charge for uh, making sure that uh, uh, temperature, relative humidity is controlled in this house. Also, I'm measuring a whole set of uh, environmental parameters which are boundary conditions for home chemistry. Attila is an academic building scientist, which is an order of magnitude over anything that you'd see me do on this channel. This house is a double wide trailer, is that right? Yes, uh, so it is a pre-manufactured home, uh, uh, something like uh, uh, 1,200 uh, uh, square feet. It is really boomy in here and it's really loud. I cannot help either of those things, so please don't comment about it. We're using a dynamic microphone, science, uh, and there's no furniture in here, um, which is because foam that's in upholstery has quite a lot of gunk in it, which would come out and screw up the chemistry uh, experiments that they're running. So yeah, it's a real boomy, boxy space with no furniture and a bunch of chemistry experiments running at the same time. Attila has metrics that I didn't even know were possible. And what we're doing here is we've got, as you can see behind us, we've got all these wires all over the place. We've got gauges, we've got uh, buttons and switches, and we've got hoses everywhere uh, tracking everything about this house. So what I'm gonna do at this point is just hand it over to Attila and let him explain what it is that we're doing here and what is possible with home performance testing that you would not have heard from me already. If I need to single one uh, recent experiment, I would uh, point out our efforts uh, to use this test house uh, as a tool for building fault detection uh, technologies. So it would be very nice if we have a technology which can tell us, hey, your house is failing. We can think about house can fail in a thousand different ways. For example, you can have uh, a low refrigerant in your system, and uh, you can have uh, condenser fouling, you can have uh, leakage in your duct. And you're measuring all of that stuff, but you also told me that energy is easy. The measuring energy performance uh, is simple compared to air quality, uh, and that's when uh, this project comes in, because very often in, in air quality, we don't know even where the problem is coming from. And this home chemistry experiment is really, really helping us to identify uh, what should we focus on. So, in a typical uh, residential home, uh, we have an uh, air system. We're using air to distribute uh, uh, energy, cooling or heating, through the house and uh, provide thermal comfort. In a typical home, we have uh, on-off uh, uh, control of air conditioning system, and, uh, which means that uh, when we have a right temperature, system is off fan stops moving air through the uh, uh, air handling unit and through the ducts uh, and through diffusers, but that doesn't mean that uh, you stopped air circulation in the home. Air circulation in the home is driven by many factors. Pretty much if you move, you are going to drag a little bit of air, but that's not so significant compared to the air circulation driven by temperature difference. Even one degree Fahrenheit uh, temperature difference in between uh, different rooms uh, drives significant airflow circulation in between those uh, rooms. For example, uh, we have here a living area uh, associated with the kitchen and uh, a bedroom area and uh, there is an open door in between and uh, if we measure if, uh, temperature we'll see uh, that uh, uh, bedroom is slightly colder. Uh, a few degree Fahrenheit is uh, significant to draw quite a large air circulation through this open door. Even if you close the door, that doesn't mean that the uh, airflow stopped because uh, very often you have some uh, 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 ventilation vent or uh, floor is uh, undercut uh, uh, and uh, there is uh, air circulation in between. Of course, that uh, air circulation will depend if the fan is on or off. In this home here, uh, specifically for these experiments, we are running uh, uh, our uh, fan continuously to produce good mixing. Uh, because that's important for measurements here. Uh, that might not be always the case, uh, but uh, the point is that you always have circulation uh, uh, in between different rooms. The question is how large it is. So during this study, because it's really the first of it, it, its kind, we don't even know what kind of compounds and what chemistry to expect. What we decided to do is to keep the building factors the same. So we have the HVAC fan on the whole time. We're controlling the relative humidity. 
we decided not to use filters in the HVAC system, and we changed what we're doing inside of the house. We're cooking, we're cleaning, we're cooking different things. We have three people in the house versus 13 people in the house, etc. So we're really trying to understand how cooking, cleaning, and occupancy affects indoor chemistry. What I would like to do is replicate what we do inside, so maybe do the same thing every day, but then change how we operate the building. So change whether or not we have the HVAC system on, whether the windows are open and closed, what kind of filters we're using in the HVAC system, whether or not we control relative humidity, etc. So it would be a little bit of the reverse experiment where we are again now keeping the same what we're doing inside by changing how we operate the building. So most of homes uh, don't have uh, dedicated ventilation systems and that was uh, the case for this home too. So for this experiment, uh, we retrofitted this house uh, by adding dedicated ventilation system because we want to control really, really amount of fresh air which is coming in. And uh, this is really, really some quick uh, uh, modification which we did. So we just uh, cut the hole uh, in, the, in the wall, uh, provided inlet damper. And you can see here a fan. Uh, this is actually a HEPA filter, but we removed the filter because uh, we didn't want to have here uh, a really high-end filtration system because that's not the purpose of this project. We want to have a uh, typical infiltration scenario uh, when we control that infiltration to constant volume, which is really, really important for our home chemistry experiments because we need to know what's the flow rate. That's a boundary conditions which enables all the calculation. To me, what's so fascinating about this is that number one, this is one of the differences between the test house and a real house. We've got three things that induce pressure is inside of a house. We've got what's happening inside the house, which is HVAC. We're running 24 hours a day and positively pressurizing the house. We've got stack effect, which this is a one story house. And we're running this circulation system to keep the air mixing all the time. And until it is measuring the temperatures of the walls and the ceilings and all that stuff. So now we've kind of corrected for stack effect. And the third thing is what's happening outside the house, which is wind. So now if the wind blows tomorrow and it doesn't blow today, it doesn't matter because this thing has positively pressurized the house the whole time and the wind actually makes almost no difference. Is that basically correct? Yes, correct. Uh, so we have still a, with very strong wind, uh, we, uh, it can overpower uh, uh, our positive pressure, but uh, that happens uh, in, in, in very uh, few situations and uh, uh, we, we detect that, that's the point. We have uh, continuous pressure measurements and uh, we see when the pressure goes negative and uh, we see uh, uh, also we measure how much uh, air is coming by infiltration. And this is that really delicate line at home chem between trying to make a laboratory where you can control everything and trying to see what happens in real life, which is what you get when you have a house. So this is really an amalgam of the two. Somebody commented the other day and said, uh, are you opening and closing the door on Thanksgiving day? 40 times to simulate all these people coming and going? No, they're not, because we wanna make sure to control the amount of ozone that's coming in through this thing. This is where ozone comes into your houses from outside. This is why you removed the filter, right? Yes, exactly. So we didn't want to have a situation when we completely clean up uh, our uh, air because that's not the case in most of houses. And these chemists have been going crazy trying to figure out how to get more ozone in the house because that's where the interesting chemistry happens. So you told me that actually, even after you take the filter out, out, we still have a huge difference in the ozone level inside versus outside is because it's getting caught in like little like in the grease of the motor and things like that yes every surface will react uh, more or less with ozone and uh, we have uh, even our, our coarse filter which is inside will remove a little bit of ozone amazing and I didn't even know that ozone was a thing that we needed to be talking about on this channel so this is really exciting for me let's go see the HVAC closet what you see here is a typical air handling unit for a residential house uh, we have a return plenum uh, then uh, we have air handling unit uh, pulling air from the from the plenum and uh, we have uh, typical components cooling coil filter section in this case we don't have a filter uh, because uh, we don't want to test filtration technology here and we want to have a situation when uh, we are really really measuring the, the full home chemistry which is happening and and uh, unobstructed by filtration systems that's not wise in a typical home because uh, you're not running experiments so you always have to have your filter in uh, and uh, have a, a good filtration systems but in this case here we specifically remove the filter because we are using this a little bit different than a typical home we are uh, operating this continuously which means that uh, we would if we would have a filter we would have quite large uh, uh, particle removal and uh, possibly some chemistry removed uh, uh, by our filter 
which uh, we didn't want to have, uh, specifically because we want to focus on the chemistry of the home. When I'm in one of my clients' homes, I set up my laptop on their kitchen table, generally. I would love a control room like this. This is where all of the data ends up getting sucked into. We've got pressure hoses, we've got electrical signals uh, communicating, we've got communications wires, and we've got all this different stuff. What exactly are we doing in this room? What's the extent of the science that's going on here? So we have here a, a whole set of instruments uh, which are controlling uh, uh, pressure in the, in the home uh, by actually uh, uh, controlling the, the supply flow rate uh, through our dedicated fresh air systems. We also then monitor what's the flow rate. So you have a control system and you have feedback loops so that you can see what is happening. But then we also have a, a data acquisition system. So these black boxes here and the wires are uh, uh, data acquisition uh, uh, components of our system uh, which are recording uh, what is happening in this house. So in the field, we're using handheld instruments that have a device that is a sensor and then it has a readout on it. And we go around and do each of those things. What you've got here is you have the tip of each of the sensors or a hose that, go, that leads to a sensor embedded where you want them. And then you've got all of the readouts in this room, essentially, is that correct? Yes, correctly. Uh, so we have, uh, for example, power measurements uh, for our uh, fan or compressor components. Uh, and then uh, we're recording them uh, uh, here in this room. And uh, pretty much not just this room, because uh, this room is uh, equipped for remote control. So very often we cannot be in the house uh, uh, during the measurements. And uh, uh, what you see here is instrumentation which also help us to communicate uh, and control the whole house uh, from my office. Hmm. Amazing. And you've been testing this house for how long? Uh, 11 years. Attila has been testing this house for 11 years. I get to spend five hours in one of my clients' houses at the outside, five, six hours tops. And I feel like at the end of that, I own their house in a way that they do not. I, in fact, I have people call me six years after and say, hey, you know how my house works better than I do. Can you tell me how my attic works? And I'll actually remember that. Do you feel a little bit in love with this house now that you know so much about it? Yes, uh, I, but also that doesn't prevent me to, to do some uh, really, really rough experiments. Uh, I, I make uh, this house fail if it's necessary. Specifically for air quality, we were loading this house occasionally with dust, uh, dust which we collected uh, from our home vacuum cleaners, uh, and uh, we were dispersing that dust here uh, to still have some realistic environment, uh, uh, because uh, this house is unoccupied. And for some experiments, uh, we needed to have uh, a real dust, typical for home, and uh, that was really, really uh, 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 pretty much uh, gruesome. Uh, okay, no, probably I should not say that. <laughs> so loading real dust in the home uh, required that we have uh, really special equipment. We have to make sure that uh, we are protected uh, and uh, we are not exposed. Uh, but, uh, and most of the time that's a faculty's uh, job. We needed uh, a real layer of, of, of uh, dust with uh, skin flakes and uh, that's what we collected in our uh, vacuum cleaners. This is the last piece of the puzzle, the airlock, is that what we're calling it? Yes, uh, and uh, that's, uh, that name came by, by researchers conducting this home chemistry. Awesome. The, sign, the, the sign on it says, keep this door closed, and also, knock before entering, because really what this room is, is the bathroom. The bath exhaust fan is running continuously, which means that that room is negatively pressurized all the time. Is that right? Yes, and we, to make sure that that happens, we also block the supply air. So pretty much only what you have in that room is the exhaust fan, no supply, which means that all the air is going under this uh, uh, door uh, and uh, makes it uh, uh, pretty much uh, isolate practically that uh, room from the rest of the house. So just in case you forgot your toothpaste or your deodorant and tomorrow is a massive personal care products day where we're experimenting with all kinds of nastiest stuff you can find on the shelves at your uh, department store. If you forgot any of that stuff, you can get it passed through the window of the bathroom because that's the only safe place to be able to open real quick, get something and know that you're not messing with the chemistry experiment that's going on in the rest of the house. So home chem is protected by the airlock. Thank you, Attila, for designing this house so that it can hold home cam and be a really true experiment for indoor chemistry. You're welcome. You guys, stay tuned. More to come from home cam. We've got all the stuff happening over the next several months. And in fact, it's gonna take six months to a year to collate all the data and find out what it means. So please do make sure you subscribe, comment, participate. Tune in next time.